Welcome to the IIoT and Remote O&M in the Pulp and Paper Industry webinar this morning. We appreciate um, your attendance. The uh, <clears throat> webinar is being recorded and it's going to be uh, uh, converted to YouTube and the recording will be posted uh, uh, again in YouTube and free to anybody. But all these slides are part of the IIoT and remote O&M uh, service. So uh, the, let me just adjust one little thing here before we start rolling. <clears throat> so what we're looking at here on the right hand side is the whole process management system for uh, an integrated pulp and paper company and as we'll see a number of the companies are moving forward with centralized systems. Our concern and uh, effort is along the lines of the industrial internet of wisdom which is a, a term that we've actually coined but we believe that IIOW is needed to empower IIoT, and in fact, uh, as we I think we'll see, the wisdom that's available from the suppliers, uh, filters, dry, uh, compressors, drives, seals, nozzles, pumps, valves, burners, fans, chemicals, filter media, all is needed in order to improve the corporate process management systems. And with your cloud-based systems, you're going to find out which existing components work best. And But this doesn't take you to the next level. It should, there, should you have a, a better component installed? And this is where you need the wisdom of these other people. So the pulp and paper industry is implementing IIoT and remote O&M. As it does so, it needs to organize the wisdom of the component suppliers so that IIoT will be empowered by IIOW. With IIoT, it is possible to maximize the efficiency of an existing pump and drive. However, the interaction with the valve and pump suppliers is needed so that they can make their products even better for each specific unique application. The suppliers of management systems need to better understand the capabilities of the component suppliers. The component suppliers need first to identify the specific opportunities and work toward providing each customer with the best products to fit his needs. With cloud-based management systems utilizing data analytics, there will be the equivalent of continuous white papers on each component. This knowledge will encourage purchasers to buy the best products rather than the ones with the lowest cost. McIlvain is providing a program built around specific forecasting of each component along with the broader analysis of the IIoT and remote O&M. So in terms of the uh, meeting today, we're going to first look at the markets uh, for the different components and for the what we call guide, control, and measure. We'll be looking briefly at the forecast for the pulp and paper industry around the world. And we've got people here from South Africa looking at Asia and so forth. So we do have this international perspective on the call here. And the uh, international and the analysis of the largest uh, pulp and paper companies, uh, we're compiling information on each one of the 50 or 60 the largest pulp manufacturers around the world. Then we'll be looking at the IIoT, which is the guide, control, and measure, and then looking at all the components. And we are going to be, a, 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 we, we have 150 slides, and we're certainly not going to be uh, spending any time uh, on many of them. However, there are some of you on the phone here who uh, uh, represent uh, uh, so some of those the, the products that will be displayed. And I uh, will give you a chance when we get to a product that you're involved in to uh, make a comment or two if you'd like to do so. Also, any questions or thoughts that you have, uh, I prefer not to be doing a monologue. So please uh, interrupt me, ask questions 
whatever. I, I might say that uh, most of our uh, webinars are interactive discussions rather than lecture type uh, 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 services. The uh, let's let's go into the markets here for combust flow and and treat. Uh, those are the areas that basically anything to do with combust flow and treat liquids and gases. Uh, we have served services or consulting. So we're, we have 50 or more uh, services in this area that are continuously updated. And then we do consulting for things like drives and, and compressors and things we're into uh, on a uh, pretty routine basis. As, as a result of that, uh, we're able to uh, forecast the market in the pulp and paper industry and other industries for the uh, individual pulp manufacturers. But since we're looking at uh, the, uh, in, in something, for instance, like uh, w wastewater treatment or air pollution control, uh, we have seven or eight different uh, services. So we're looking at every filter, uh, membrane filter, whether it's RO or UF or MF cartridges, whether they're non-woven cartridges or membrane cartridges or string wound or ceramic and on and on. So we have uh, the ability here to make these specific forecasts. But what I think is interesting here is that the guide control and measure, which is really your heart of your IIoT, is around a billion dollars a year for these pulp and paper suppliers, uh, uh, users, operators, that's what they're going to be purchasing. But they're going to be purchasing $21 uh, billion worth of all this combust flow and, and treat equipment. And if that equipment can be made 10% more efficient with IIoT and the suppliers of that equipment can make better equipment which shows up in these continuous white papers, they have the potential to raise their revenues by 2.1 billion. So our conclusion is that there's a huge potential for the contributions from the component suppliers. And even for some of the eight companies, the Emerson's, uh, um, ABB's, Rockwell's, et cetera, their direct um, con guide, control, and measure activities, for instance, are $90 million, but they, um, they do a billion dollars in the valves and some of these other uh, products. So again, improving these other products, even for the automation suppliers, is a bigger source of new revenue than the uh, guide control and measure. But certainly the guide control and measure uh, revenues are going to increase uh, uh, at a much rapid, more rapid pace than, than any of the other components. And, and we would say the guide portion of that uh, will uh, increase at even larger um, uh, levels and larger rates. And we'll be defining that guide a little bit more closely. This can all be then translated into the individual producers. And we believe, for instance, that international paper uh, is going to spend $16 million next year on the guide uh, services, uh, 33 on control, 11 on measurement, 120 million on water treatment, 72 million on pumps, 108 million on uh, a variable stream drives and motors. So <clears throat> these are uh, the opportunities for the individual suppliers, and we are, are providing those for the 50 or so largest um, uh, suppliers and then uh, uh, per, uh, operators. But if you look over here on the left-hand side, we do have all these reports where we get into much deeper dives. We have, for instance, on valves, uh, we have uh, 
the control valves uh, as well as the on-off valves. And we have uh, eight different types of on-off valves. And so we actually have uh, a 26,000 forecast in the area. And in air pollution control, we have forecasts for each different type of equipment. We are taking the um, this to the next level in terms of the uh, purchasers in that we are breaking them out by the continents. So we break out the actual forecast for the products uh, by every country of the world and then uh, 80, 80 countries and subregions and then regions and so forth. But for the individual purchasers, uh, we're taking it to uh, the, the uh, continental level and we're doing it for each purchaser. And here happens to be in the uh, measurement area where, uh, pardon me, this is the guide control and measurement. We'll show you measurement instruments in a minute. But this is how much we expect these people to spend in the, the guiding area here, which would be the software and uh, services and consulting. That's that guide. And then the control and then the, the measure by obviously International Paper has uh, some activity outside the United States. Uh, and Stora Ensa, of course, has most of their activity outside of the United States. So we do get into the actual instruments. And in the case of, uh, of liquids, air and gases, powders and chips. So the, uh, that's, that's the way we chose to break out uh, the analyzer markets for the individual purchasers. Let's move on now quickly to the pulp and paper industry forecast. I'm not going to spend any time on it here, but the general uh, uh, output uh, or conclusion that you're going to reach here is that the global uh, activity is up uh, uh, three to four percent over the uh, year, but it's in particular areas, Asia and these other areas. So uh, pulp demand geared to China, et cetera. So let's go on to the uh, largest uh, pulp and paper uh, companies. And uh, we will be uh, pursuing this based on their uh, 2016 uh, production rate. The, uh, it's a little misleading to use sales. And here are some samples, for instance, of sales for the top you know, uh, 50 or so companies. Uh, we are tracking uh, capacity increases in capital investments, and we do have other services uh, uh, which take these things to the next level in terms of uh, specific activities. For international paper, um, they are repositioning and automating and transforming the uh, company as um, one of the individuals, is, uh, senior executives, is quoted here as saying, <clears throat> we're not, I'm not going to go into much of the detail here. I wanted to pull out of a couple of the, of the uh, numbers, though, that they, uh, that they uh, show, for instance, um, the chemicals is 8% of their total uh, costs materials 15 and um, so these are important things uh, to them and they're buying uh, 320,000 tons of of caustic uh, soda a year the water permits for these uh, plants are important uh, uh, sources of information the same for the air permits. Uh, for instance, the air permit would have every dust collector on uh, every as aspect of the uh, plant there, where you've got paper dust coming out of, of a, uh, through a, a dust collector. There, there would be uh, an input on the Title V permit that would show 
details on that collector. The pulp mills are, are moving ahead with IIoT. Uh, here is a, a presentation at the OSI uh, users meeting. And um, so uh, Tom got, uh, gets um, of Samsung Controls uh, uh, is going to, I was looking for actually somebody from OSI Soft, but I don't think they're actually on the call here. They did sign up. But um, the uh, OSI uh, uh, has basically provided a number of ways for uh, a plant to improve its calculation of production aspects and to build a calculation template. And with their asset framework system, become a one-stop shop for uh, enterprise aliases for calculated results, uh, time-stamped coefficient changes, and DCS calculation comparison. And you can track things like downtime and the future data flow and tracking energy consumption. And in the energy consumption, uh, this might be a good place to use the example of how newer components can also be applied. Even without the newer components, you are seeing a 35% uh, drop in, in the uh, uh, reduction in the steam per ton uh, over this period of time. But by improving components, that can even be improved further. Uh, Scott Affelt has been involved uh, uh, in some of our webinars that we did for a power company uh, that showed that um, there could be a substantial reduction in NOx emissions with combustion optimization. But more important uh, to, to the input was a novel chemical, which is now under test at that plant, which will reduce the NOx even further. And in the case of the pulp and paper industry, uh, they would be well served to take uh, advantage of what is happening with uh, biomass com combustors and uh, glass plants where they have incorporated a catalytic uh, ceramic uh, filter in convention in, as opposed to the conventional precipitators or fabric filters. And this unit takes out the, uh, with, with, with hydrated lime, takes out the, the NOx, the, uh, SO2, the HCl, and the particulate at 850 degrees. And so you have clean hot gas at uh, 850 degrees Fahrenheit, and the potential for energy recovery becomes huge. So here we have a 35% uh, reduction in steam without changing the components, but with changes like this, with this that uh, would represent even bigger uh, reductions in the steam per ton. The uh, Stora Enso, Enso is one of the other large companies, and they have uh, plants in, in various, uh, obviously, Europe and the U.S. and elsewhere, and they are experiencing increasing demand. And the uh, one thing I wanted to do was kind of stop and show one other example here. So they're using a Thermo Fisher photometric analyzer for silica and phosphate and some of the other uh, of, of chemicals of concern. But it, it's been a very time consuming uh, uh, system. And so with the new uh, photometric, photometric analyzer, these calculations can be made quickly. And for process management, that's the key, is being able to understand uh, changes quickly. And so even though it's a laboratory instrument, 
the input from that laboratory instrument to the system uh, can be important. And the quicker that can be done and the more easily it can be done and the more, out, more calculations that can be done, the better the control system. So this is some more details on this particular uh, system. Uh, West Rock is another uh, pulper, a uh, pulp and play player, uh, pulp and paper player, uh, stationed in the United States, and that's the new name for the company. And then Weyerhaeuser's made some changes selling pulp mills, but they're interested. Uh, interesting that uh, Oriented Strand Board, for instance, is one of their big products and in terms of uh, liquids, gases, and powders, um, oriented strand board plants have a number of challenging applications and they're heavily involved in the uh, biomass uh, activities and uh, the regulations and, and environment. There, I, I think Weyers is a good example of how you need to be looking at all the environmental activities uh, with the new Trump administration, a uh, federal EPA is less likely to be tough on the uh, uh, that, uh, on, on the activities of the states. So it's whatever Washington State is developing in terms of its water-based quality criteria that will be more important to Weyerhaeuser than any of the national programs. Let's move in again. We are going to look at the guide and other uh, automation aspects of the pulp and paper industry. And the guide aspects uh, in a, uh, are going to be, in our estimation, 330 million, of which 25 million um, will be uh, these the share that your conventional large automation suppliers uh, are going to be uh, providing. So that certainly is a big opportunity for others. And we're going to have some specific examples here, and I'll just go into some of them. Accenture obviously is very big in all these different areas. And in just 10 weeks, by this particular client, they uh, made an assessment of current gaps and opportunities in the operations and process design to align the clients' international businesses to grow uh, uh, more robustly, and logistics rules and a roadmap identifying control, profitability, and compliance levels. But these component suppliers are very active with all this guide type activity. And Andritz is an example here with their fiber vision with all the different equipment that they supply to the industry, they have the understanding of the needs uh, uh, for control and have made an investment in the software and services and consulting, which is this whole guide area here. Uh, the same is true of the chemi chemical companies. Uh, Buckman uh, is an example of somebody who is combining knowledge uh, with chemistry and equipment. And this is an example of how they're making a, uh, a clarifier work better and the fiber recovery and so forth here. So that is an important um, uh, service that they are able to provide. And again, they understand these processes and the question longer term as you move to the cloud is what what the what would be the revenue for this type of knowledge and who will uh, uh, receive that uh, revenue so my advice to these component companies is to make sure that you uh, take the applicable uh, deserve share of the market with the knowledge that you are bringing to it. And Emerson is another example here where uh, their digester process control is a demonstration really of, of deep knowledge in this area. 
Uh, GE and Chimera have a distribution agreement for Insight knowledge management system in the pulp industry. So with these smaller uh, software developments that can be built around the equipment, the component suppliers have a bigger opportunity when it comes to integrating all this into the larger process management systems. There is the opportunity to collaborate with uh, many of the uh, process management suppliers like uh, GE. But uh, Chimera does offer remote monitoring with expert support. And that brings up this question of who is going to be providing all this expertise. And as the knowledge continues to explode, the, the niche expertise at this very specific level is becoming more and more important. And so the component suppliers and the, and the consumable suppliers have the ability to and should be garnering revenues from advising the uh, pulp mill when it comes to critical uh, aspects. If there's a problem that it, it rises, for instance, uh, and you're a chemical supplier, and the first line or first tier of operators isn't able to solve the problem, and the next layer isn't, then the third layer probably is going to be the chem chemical supplier themselves. And if there is a cloud-based system which, which feeds material to all the component suppliers who are relevant for a particular piece of information, there will be the ability for instant reaction from those component suppliers to uh, offer the right advice. And people like Camir are already into total chemistry management. And the control is um, not only the people who actually make some of this hardware, but some of the others are buying and using the uh, hardware. So the uh, you, you certainly have the ABB uh, productive uh, management systems. Uh, here's an example here, KPAQ. But people like Andritz are also providing uh, automation with the remote monitoring. So in this particular case, they would be um, the provider of this particular type of process uh, management uh, system. And Buckman has uh, controllers uh, configured with on-site. And the, Emerson, again, has uh, control systems for the digesters. But in terms of other control, uh, it also has the transmitters. Uh, Honeywell is involved with their Experian K PKS system and uh, performance monitors by Honeywell are being used at this particular Ontario pulp mill. And then we get into uh, measurement. And we basically are looking at, you know, the liquid pressure and flow, liquid contaminants and concentrations, air, gas uh, flow and pressure, gas contaminants, then the powders, uh, and those would be just volumetric and gravimetric weighing, but also even, even to things like chip moisture and other parameters with the solids. And, of course, pressure is, uh, is something that's important, and Ashcroft has uh, uh, pressure instrumentation all over these plants. Uh, Berthold is an example uh, on the, on the uh, uh, solid side or the powder side of actually with a belt weigher. And then they also have microwave technology to measure the chip moisture. Uh, Anderson Hauser is measuring pH in the fibrous media. And has, uh, uh, Emerson has a magnetic flow meter to address the variability in the paper quality at Boise Cascade. 
FCI thermal dispersion level uh, switches are used in black liquor, and it's a difficult and challenging uh, application, which has been successfully addressed uh, with their technology. Uh, Intech has flow meters and switches, and shows here a success at a large uh, paper company. The gases and uh, air in the, in a pulp mill are substantial, and Curse is, is measuring combustion air and stack monitors and digester gases in a lot of areas where there are air instruments uh, required. Magnetrol has level and flow control uh, instrumentation in all the areas that we've seen here in blue. And so there's substantial numbers of these required in a um, pulp or paper mill. And also the uh, control of the solids level. And so we have level switches for chips and other products as well. Thermal Fisher is a uh, major player in instrumentation and provides density gauges uh, for the uh, consistency in pulp and paper. They also provide TRS uh, SEMs. And so the condition uh, emissions monitor is a process tool as well as a regulatory device in that the adjustments uh, can be made in the process based on the uh, emissions. And in fact, many of these plants uh, would be best served by having uh, instrumentation of SO2 and, and other uh, gases ahead of their uh, scrubbers or precipitators or other devices, as well as in the stack and use them for process instrumentation as well. Yokogawa is very active in all this uh, er, uh, in, in the industry and provides a number of good diagrams to show where each of their types of instruments would be used. And they understand these processes well enough to recommend, for instance, uh, con conductivity sensors to measure the alkali concentration in the black liquor. And they measure uh, pulp, uh, they measure pH and other parameters uh, as well. We move into the liquids, and so we have black liquor filtration, sludge dewatering, pumps, valves, mixers, treatment chemicals, and then you've got filter media, which is important in this, this industry as well. Here's an example of the centrifugal pumps that are supplied by Andritz for the uh, industry. They also have these control systems that we were uh, talking about before. And uh, ChemTreat has uh, water treatment control systems as well. The valves are pro prolific in this industry. And here's some very good diagrams by DeZurich, which show the location of all these different valves. So you've got rotary control valves, you've got on-off plug valves, you've got butterfly valves and all the different types of uh, valves that are used in all these different processes. And that extends to the stock preparation as well. The filtration group has com uh, compiled uh, a number of products by buying companies in, in a number of different uh, product areas. So they've just purchased Molly uh, earlier and uh, a few years ago or less, and now uh, can also supply uh, filters to purify the bonding agents for the mills here. 
their Caden Group, which is also an acquisition in the recent years, provides a lubricant and power fuel conditioning and hy hydraulic uh, fluid filtration. Emerson has uh, purchased uh, Pantier, which used to be the Tyco valve group. So with these uh, two large valve companies, you now have a, a company that supplies uh, or sells over $3.6 billion worth of valves a year. Uh, and so uh, over 110 million of that is to the uh, pulp and paper industry. And there are specialized uh, valves from the Tyco side. You have the RO gate valve for the slurries. But the uh, Emerson has been traditionally a major control valve supplier to the pulp and paper industry. And here's some of the applications of the uh, control valves in the various uh, processes within the pulp and paper industry. And GE uh, you know, spent $3 billion to acquire the dresser, uh, dresser uh, lines of valves. And they're being operated out of GE oil and gas, but we estimate that their sales into the pulp and paper industry are only about $15 million a year. But they do have uh, special rotary uh, ball valves designed to handle the pulp and paper uh, viscous fluids in sizes up to 12 inches. GEA is involved in this industry with heat exchangers as well as centrifuges and many other different products. But uh, the heat exchange is certainly a, a major a process in the pulp and paper industry, but they've taken their activity to the next level where they're involved with the research center to actually improve uh, the cellulose uh, process with uh, the, by microfibrillation and using their homogenizers. Netterman is a uh, conglomeration of uh, some of the companies that you might be familiar with, Micropol and, and uh, Minardi and so forth here. And so uh, they, uh, they have a number of the uh, filters that are used in the pulp and paper industry, as well as the uh, supplying the, the media. Paul has uh, filters for bleaching and paper machines, as well as uh, other aspects. Uh, Samson uh, valves are used for a number of applications. And here's one for the fibrous flow of materials and flow of vapor in the industry. Solenis is one of the major chemical uh, suppliers to the industry. And as you can see from this uh, view, that there are a lot of different chemicals used in each of the different processes within the uh, pulp and paper industry. Here we're looking at nozzles, and again, we're back to the fact that one of the nozzle suppliers here, which is Spraying Systems, provides the con controls with the easy integration to plant control, control systems uh, of, of, of the control of all these nozzles, and this results in efficiency gains in coating and moisturizing. But our question is, you know, longer term, how much of the guidance in this software uh, is going to be uh, result in revenues for a spraying system as opposed to the process management system supplier and, and how does spraying systems over time protect itself from this intellectual property which it is developing and likewise how does the industry encourage the development of this intellectual property 
uh, and the risk would be that the process management supplier avoids this and buys a standard uh, set of nozzles more cheaply and uses their own uh, software, whereas uh, I mean, this might be an alternative that would be a better choice for the end user. Uh, we are, we have Vitrex on the phone with us uh, in this uh, conference, so I just might mention that uh, another important aspect of all this are the materials, and we are involved ourselves in the materials. We we're write regular, regularly for stainless steel, World Magazine, etc. But all these materials can make a huge difference in the uh, process management, and a peak, which is a material which can handle uh, higher temperatures as well as corrosion, uh, corrosive um, chemicals, is a uh, material that is being used in these nozzles by uh, spraying systems. Sulcer is very active in the mixers and the pumps in this area. and uh, the, this displays the agitators and mixers and uh, some of the thing, some of the uh, equipment that they're supplying at, at the chemical pulp um, fiber lines and pulp drying and so forth here. And um, the one important uh, uh, area is ozone uh, systems for bleaching and and wastewater. And the uh, ozone generator is a major uh, consumer of power, but on the other hand, it is important in providing the bleaching that is uh, needed. And Xylem has been a major uh, supplier uh, in this area. And I believe we have a couple people from uh, uh, Xylem on uh, Harold Stapel, uh, are you on on with us there? Yeah, and then, uh, and Brendan, I know that uh, that uh, you're on with us there. Um, you might want to comment. On, yeah, uh, one of the two of you might want to comment on some of your uh, activities and how active are you in furnishing these ozone generators to pulp and paper manufacturers. Okay, what we've seen over the last 10 years is a drastic increase in inquiries with regards to green bleaching or uh, more environmentally friendly bleaching processes, which then obviously rely on ozone replacing chlorine and chlorine dioxide. Um, we've sold now uh, last year into China over a ton an hour of ozone um, into three different companies uh, for their new expansion, or, well, two new mills and one expansion project, uh, and we're seeing uh, a growing demand or interest in countries like India, uh, Vietnam, Thailand, uh, where governments are starting to crack down on discharge and environmental uh, legislation. Um, so in terms of ozone bleaching, what you're achieving is two twofold. One, you improve pulp quality and, and um, brightness, but you also have an environmental spin-off benefit where your wastewater treatment becomes easier to treat with less or no AOX values, uh, better color and less COD, uh, more BOD, so easier to treat uh, effluent. That's an interesting perspective. You mentioned India there, and earlier I mentioned this uh, uh, Berkshire Hathaway Energy and the fact that they were going to be solving this NOx problem with chemicals, but actually what I meant to, to, to be more clear, they're actually going to use ozone um, and inject it ahead of the uh, uh, scrubber. And um, we uh, we have rec we recommended that to them, and it actually looks like it's going to be able to give them that trim that they need. But back on India, India is putting NOx control in at a lot of their power plants, and, and we believe that uh, some of those older power plants may want to look because they're all putting in, they're putting in scrubbers and all these things. So, mm -hmm. so that the ozone injection, I think, might be a um, 
uh, our, our evaluation of it is it's a good trim uh, technology that if you, you can't remove all the knocks with those on it would be too expensive. But uh, unlike SCR, which you know has you can you know you do, you don't have any choice. You either have to remove it all or you don't. You don't. But with ozone, you the can. Only issue, yeah. The only issue with ozone is it's a high capital intensive uh, upfront. Your OPEX is, is relatively low. You, I mean, you're only consuming power, and for a power plant, that's that's uh, pretty cheap. But you have a high initial cost. So if you compare it to other NOx systems where you have basically, as you said, just a scrubber or something sim simple to put in, st in store, the ozone is uh, capitally uh, intensive. But yeah, after that, your OPEX. OPEX is, is far cheaper than any of the alternate processes. Yeah, well, in the case, for instance, of BHE, they're already down, you know, they're using other technology to get down. To, to knock it down, yeah. So they only have to go down from 0.7 uh, pounds per million BDU down to 0.6. So yeah, the capital for ozone is going to be yeah. relatively small. And so that that is being um, <laughs> installed there this summer, I believe. Um, and they're going to be uh, uh, testing that process. But we do think that, uh, uh, and, and that is the way that the refinery industry is taking out NOx. But we do believe some of these other industries, and even the pulp and paper industry, uh, for their NOx control, uh, may want to be uh, thinking about that in those areas where they just have to get a little bit of NOx down. Because uh, otherwise, with SCR, you know, you're at, let's say you're at 85%, you need to get to 90%. You put another layer of, of catalyst in there and it's going to almost you know add a third to the price and and you're going to get much higher than the 90 percent but you really didn't need it so but uh, but it's interesting that uh, uh, that all this is going on for the green uh, bleaching and so forth in India and it, it, there certainly is an awakening isn't is there not throughout Asia uh, that uh, you need to improve the environment and uh, that's that's another thing that we're certainly finding out. For instance, on the air pollution side, China has tougher regulations now than almost any uh, other country. So uh, that doesn't mean that the air is as clean as it should be because they've got a lot of small little em emitters uh, in restaurants and small places. But in terms of the big big corporations, the chemical companies, the power companies, and so forth, they're 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 taking it to the the ultimate in terms of pollution control. Yeah, their, their discharge limits now are better than or, well, uh, tighter than most of the European countries. So they have definitely tightened up. And, well, you're seeing improvements as well. You do you do see it in the environment. There is definite improvements in the Chinese air quality and that kind of stuff. Um, over the 10, 10 odd years that I've been traveling to China, there's been, you can actually see the improvement that's been made. Yeah, one interesting, and I probably get too much of a sideline here, that uh, Sinopec is building a a $30 billion coal gasification pipeline throughout China. And it's kind of laughable from the standpoint that the coal usage of coal in the world has gone up by a huge extent, but the environment will be considerably improved because one of ch the China's big problem is that they, they don't have ex inexpensive natural gas. So restaurants and light manufacturing and some residents and so forth are burning solid fuels and they're creating all sorts of smog. So once this clean coal gas is distributed all over the country and you've got three to four dollar a million BTU gas throughout the country, uh, China expects this smog to disappear and uh, clean natural gas to uh, synthetic natural gas to replace all these solid fuels. So, Interesting. yeah, here's an example uh, at a Brazilian pulp mill here that uh, uh, I, I don't know if there's any other comments you want to make about that particular installation. It's the largest single ozone installation in the world at the moment, um, capable of producing up to a ton an hour um, of ozone, uh, made up of five different generators. Um, yeah, it's one of the one of the best run systems actually. A very low power. They're looking at about uh, eight kilowatts per kilogram of ozone produced there. So uh, very low power and very. Um, it's one of our best references. So the larger the system is, the more efficient it can be in terms of uh, 
power um, for kind of uh, ozone? No, not really. Uh, uh, our gener generators are pretty much set. Um, it's the design of the electrode, the design of the process, uh, cooling water temperature, oxygen purity, those kind of things that will affect the uh, energy consumption. Oh, okay. So it's um, other variable. Yeah, yeah. But we, uh, Xylem systems in particular, are the lowest, uh, amongst the lowest power consumers per kilogram of ozone on the market. So we are pretty green in terms of our technology. And as you say, that's becoming in, increasingly important. And Xylem is uh, heavily involved in pumps and treatment and tests, so transport, test, and treatment. And in the treatment area, uh, you uh, many years ago bought the largest uh, granular media filter company in the world and does provide the uh, underdrain for uh, the Leopold type uh, filters in, uh, in this particular case at uh, Wisconsin Rapids. And with the purchase uh, of uh, PCI uh, a number of years ago, uh, Xylem also provides the RO, uh, UF, NF, and MF uh, membrane systems for all these different applications in the pulp and paper industry. The filtration uh, group is uh, active with a number of products in pulp and paper, but the filter belts is an important aspect and, and clause. And so they have the um, uh, spiral and metal fabrics as well as the cloth uh, fabrics for fiber capture and bleaching and chemical treatment and the dryer uh, needs. Valnet uh, is active in the industry with various different filtration the devices, including the disc filter bags with high capacity, high pulp discharge consistency, improved filtrate quality, and cost effective to uh, retrofit. And they have the wires and the fabrics uh, as well. And then on the gases, we have a number of examples here. And so Obviously, pneumatic control can be important, and Festo provides a complete solution in the pneumatic control area. Back on the filtration group again, uh, corrosion from the chlorine fumes and so forth is important throughout the mill. And so filtration group has various different uh, scrubbers and systems, depending on the uh, size of the area and the level of, of chlorine or other contaminants to be removed. A Freidenberg is a competitor and provides the systems and also provides the pellets for uh, each of the uh, contaminants here. We haven't really talked a whole lot about the steam and power aspects, but uh, this is very important in the pulp and paper industry and you have recovery boilers, you've got bark boilers, all sorts of areas where you've got uh, uh, the potential to generate steam and some tricky tricky applications. But the uh, logic control that uh, GE furnishes is widely used throughout the industry. What is less well known and is still under development is the um, GE precipitators and scrubbers for pulp and paper. And there's a checkered history starting with combustion engineering, who was acquired by ABB, who then was acquired by uh, the scrubber group and precipitator group required by, uh, acquired by Alstom and now by GE. So as of the last year or so, uh, GE was, or two, GE got an air pollution control company that may, they may or may not want it, have wanted as part of the Alstom uh, uh, gas turbine uh, ac activity and purchases. But uh, this is the uh, oldest, uh, uh, not the oldest, but the most sophisticated electrostatic precipitator company in the world going at the, uh, back to FLAC in uh, the 1970s and 80s. And they uh, are already operating uh, precipitators remotely on the very complicated uh, uh, electrical systems that you uh, 
that you have so that the opportunity really here is for remote O&M of your precipitators uh, as early as you're uh, remotely monitoring anything in a pulp mill. And they have been selling, uh, for instance, this precipitator to a uh, Brazilian uh, pulp mill. So the ventilation systems are also important. And here's uh, one at Stora Insa, which was provided by TM Systems. And IVI points out all the neat things that you need to do when putting in a ventilation system and the reasons, uh, reduce the corrosion, minimizing fiber and dust buildup, curtailing moisture. And one of the important things is uh, dust collection systems that uh, prevent explosive uh, dust from accumulating in the plant, but also uh, you then have to design the dust collection system so it doesn't become an explosion source itself. And last but not least, we have the the power uh, powders here. So there's pneumatic conveyors uh, for the uh, powders and, and other materials. There are obviously the mechanical conveyors, screw conveyors, rotary feeders, screens, silos, all this to handle the free-flowing materials in a pulp mill. And Clyde Bergman uh, is a European-based company that has fly ash and bottom ash systems, fuel feed, slurry systems, silo storage, etc. And Kaysen uh, is a screen supplier, and screens are used to remove suspended solids from circulated water, and they uh, have scraper conveyors and using screens for bark byproducts. Screens are also uh, used for the cooking liquor, and they vary. So, you know, 80 mesh screens, 100 mesh screens, 400 mesh screens are, are uh, in use in these various different applications. And they're used for fiber recovery as well. And Copar is another uh, supplier of conveying equipment for you know all the different ingredients that go into the pulp and paper plant, which can come in in a dry granular form, such as magnesium oxide, starch, magnesium sulfite, bentonite, and kaolin. And you do have to control the level control in bark and other uh, solid uh, granular materials that are used in the plant. That brings us to the end of the uh, presentation here. And the, the takeaway is that IIOW is not going to happen on its own. It's got to be cultivated the way IIOT is being cultivated. And what it means is tapping all this knowledge and wisdom of all these component suppliers and somehow integrating it into the process management systems. And I doubt that it's going to be top down where the Accentures and the GE and these uh, people are going to be systematically gathering all the information on every filter option, every drive option, every type of seal, uh, where to use peak and where not to use peak. And it's going to be up to the Vitrex to contribute on where peak should be used and for uh, Siemens to communicate where their drives should be best used and how their drives can be improved uh, and at an increased cost to the end user, but why it's going to be justified. So we are uh, have a, a various different levels of activity in this, starting with how big the markets are for each of the individual pulp mills, and then more detailed marketing programs in addition. And for those that are involved in the guide control and measure, uh, we are providing those very detailed 
forecast for the 550 companies in our IIoT and remote O&M report. And that finishes up the uh, presentation. Did anybody have any questions or additional comments that they'd like to make? We still have some time to discuss all this. Um, so anybody who's so inclined, I'd be welcome any questions or even uh, comments that you might have, things we might have missed. If not, thank you very much for your participation and the you will be getting access to the YouTube uh, version of this. Thanks again and have a good day. This is Bob McElvain signing off for today. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>